It's now 2021 and the mortgage market is uh, very, very challenging right now. There are lots of changes happening. What's happening with the um, payment holiday, stamp duty holiday? What's going on with all the lending that's happening? The high to loan to value lending, what's happened with that? Let's get an update around that. Let's look at self-employment and how self-employed uh, mortgage uh, clients have been hit and affected, as well as the people that are maybe in sales that are getting commission. Overtime people, people that are doing a lot more overtime, um, how are they being treated right now? Let's look at the legal profession and how they're dealing with the load of work. Let's talk about the valuation process and how values are coping and what some people are doing to try to streamline the process. Let's talk about the mortgage industry itself and mortgage brokers. What is going to happen to us longer term? What's going to happen to our businesses as technology takes over? So um, what I'll do is I'll put these all in little sections and I'll put the links underneath it in, in the description. So you, if you're interested just in self-employed stuff you can just click on it if you're interested in commissions because you're in sales you can look at it if you're interested at in the stamp duty holiday um, sort of part you can look at it but I would really appreciate you guys having a having a look um, let me know what you think what's your thoughts around some of those topics and what you think the bigger picture is for us within the UK finance sector take care all the best Hey everybody, I just want to make something clear. Although my company is called Niche Advice and we're professional mortgage brokers, the videos that I produce for you are for information purposes only. Should you need actual advice, you can either get in touch with us directly or any other suitably qualified mortgage broker firm. Thank you. I thought we'll talk about the mortgage update, what's happened so far in January um, and going into February. Um, what are the signs out of the market? What's been happening really? So. Um, the first point, I suppose, is um, uh, around the stamp duty holidays. Now, I have been on record uh, as saying I think it will be extended. Um, I think it will get extended near the time. However, I think I think it might not be extended. The signs are, you know, everyone's putting the pressure on. So the lenders are putting the lobbying on. The solicitors are trying to lobby. Um, the all the other bodies, the surveyors, everybody's saying, look, this is going to be a nightmare. You know, there are going to be hundreds of thousands of people potentially who are going to lose out on the stamp duty holiday incentive. However. Um, the government's not budging and I will put all the videos, I'll, I'll put a couple of clips now of what I've said about it, okay, what I've said in the past about the stamp duty. Um, um, so watch this. Unless um, they decide to extend this and I have a feeling that they probably will extend it and I did do a video on this about two months ago when the stamp duty thing came in and I said, I think they'll extend it. Um, I don't think they'll tell people now. I think they'll probably wait until the end of, end of the year. Because if they told people that the, the stamp duty extension is going to happen, what would you do? A lot of people would just put it on hold. They'll so, okay. So, where, where, do we, where do we stand? Where do I think we stand? I still think, I still think, I mean, what is it? It's the 27th now. I still think there might be a U-turn coming, guys. I'm, I'm holding out strong. I've actually got bets going with some of my clients um, about, you know, stamp duty. I've, I've got a very expensive meal. I have to take a family out to if the government does not extend the stamp duty holiday. So, mm, but I, I'm not as confident as what I was uh, back back when I made those predictions. Um, from a uh, mortgage perspective, uh, it's actually quite good from a market perspective. A lot more products out there. I mean, I had a, I had a, um, uh, a, an email to say, you know, there's probably around about 15 lenders now, more than probably 15 lenders, that are lending at 90% loan to value. Now, considering there must have been about four about two months ago, there's a big movement in what people are looking to do. It's really interesting around the pricing's perspective. The pricing's still not great, but there's lots of choice out there. The reason the lenders are coming out there is because there's some money to be made, because there is some demand at 90% loan to value. Um, what you will find is there's not much difference between the two year fix and a five year fix, because essentially the lenders are trying to entice you to go on a fixed rate period for longer. It means that they can secure them funds for longer, they can secure that fund there for longer, and they can make more margin over the years um, so yeah so that, that's that's a positive I suppose from a lending perspective there's a lot more choice out there where there isn't choice uh, and they're not putting their heads uh, above the parable um, is the affordability side of it okay so from an affordability perspective things have got 
deteriorated quite badly from a from from a lending perspective. Um, the parts that have been hit is 90% loan to value. Generally, everybody's sticking at four and a half times income. So I don't know of anybody that's going beyond that. Um, the bits that people have taken a hit is self-employed. Now, a lot of major lenders now have got a, a, a question they ask now on an affordability calculator, which says, is the person employed or self-employed? And what you will find is if the person is self-employed, they're often reducing their income multiples. So if they could lend to four and a half or five times income on a employed person, they're lending at you know, 4.25 maybe on a self-employed person, which is understandable from their perspective, but I think they've missed a trick here. Um, if you're employed, your company, your owners, your, um, your employers can say, do you know what? See you later, don't come in again. Uh, or from this date, you're made redundant. Okay, you have less control over your destiny. Okay, um, there's there's a question to say that you know because you've been in a job, you could probably get another job similar. But as a self-employed person, and if you are someone who's looking to get a mortgage, so you've got to have sh some, shown some income, some level of profit. Okay, surely um, you know you're you're in, more in control of your destiny because you have hindsight. You will know what your industry is going to be like what your business profile is going uh, is is like and obviously self-employed applicants are going by always in the past because they're going by last year's accounts or two years average accounts okay so i think until a a, a lender can get its head around how self-employed people work um you know the best they can do right now is saying oh we'll go by last year's accounts well guess what a lot of businesses um or, or a lot of the high street lenders will go for the average of two years, okay? So a lot of businesses will have taken a hit, okay? This could be a short-term issue. This could be, you know, six months that they've taken a hit. So are we going to penalize them for the next couple of years because they had a coronavirus thing? So the person that needs to get a mortgage next year or two years' time, are they going to be under the pressure because they didn't, um, you know, they didn't perform well during a global pandemic, a, you know, once-in-a-generation um, uh, event, okay? And they still haven't got their heads around this, okay? And they still don't understand it. And I'd, I'd love to have a conversation with the product. I know where they're coming from. They're trying to, um, you know, cover their own risk. But if you're really going to be innovative, you've got to start looking at closely around business, manual underwriting, and um, being able to differentiate between different sectors. Very important. Don't just tarnish self-employed. It's a big difference between a self-employed IT contract or self IT contract is probably not there but a self-employed person may be working within the IT sector okay um, and not necessarily being a contractor but working within IT sales for example um, than someone who is self-employed travel agent for example okay or, or a pub owner okay two different demographics two different parts but unfortunately these big lenders are just saying you're self-employed bang drop your income multiple they don't understand it and it's very frustrating for someone who is self-employed um, to sort of trying to educate these lenders and say look it's not just about you know are you self-employed or employed what is the business what is the sector okay what's the cash flow look like let's have an overview of the last three months bank statements let's get some projections of the accountants okay now I know a lot of lenders basically used to go by accountants projections and accountants stuff and that sort of went with all the regulation that came in and said you know and frankly because there was a lot of dodginess going on with the accountants and the accountants you know everybody was saying oh yeah my client's going to do well and a load of businesses went pop before you know after 2008 and a lot of those businesses were written with accountant certificates but I think there's been a lot more um, the compliance um, uh, put forward not only on the on the part of the brokers and the, and the clients but also the accountants so um, uh, I think there needs to be more emphasis going on the accountants because the accountants could be you know are up to date especially if they're doing VAT returns all the time so they can have a good idea of how that business is performing up to date not six months ago not when they last filed their accounts okay they can have a look at it and they can look at it because a lot of i mean i've got a client here he gets paid lump sums of payment you know you're talking 200 300 thousand pounds every seven months okay so how do you put that in a box okay you need the assistance of an accountant to say look 
Here's the track record of the business. This is how he's built. This is how it's invoiced. This is how it's worked out. Okay? Um, and you need that guidance and you need that to have some weight with the lenders. And unfortunately, at the moment, a lot of the stuff external people are doing don't have a lot of weight. Until there's a lender that could look at those type of um, uh, products and, and underwriting initiatives, um, uh, we're going to struggle for self-employed people. Now, if you're putting your lending hat on, you'd say, no, actually, that's too risky. I don't want that risk. Okay, I want to see if a business is doing well and it's going to be seen on their current you know, accounts and it's going to be recent. So, you know, they're, they're trying to cover their bets. I'm seeing it from a mortgage broker's perspective. I'm sure if, a, if it was a lender compliance person sitting opposite me, they would have a lot more to say about it. Um, so that's that's a big part of self-employment. Um, I think from employed perspective, the, the sectors that are under pressure are um, commission, bonus, overtime. I'm getting more and more calls from you know recruitment consultants that are on 20k basic but you know have been earning 60 70 thousand pounds annually okay for many many years however they've now taken a dip so that for that three months a lot of firms what they did is they held back on their commission for cash flow reasons they're now giving it to them so what a lot of people are doing is um they're coming to me and say, look at my last three months. It looks really good. You know, £5,000, £7,000, £8,000 in the last three months uh, coming through as additional income. However, don't be fooled by that because the lenders, just like I will, will know that a lot of companies have held back bonuses and commission and now are now giving that commission. So what lenders tend to look at when it's on commission, different lenders have got rules. So some lenders will say, we will work off the average of the last three months. Others will say we'll take 100% of the last three months. Others will say we'll take 100% of the last six months. Okay. Some would say we'll take the lowest figure over the last three months. But all of those lenders will check something else, which a lot of people don't tell you about, or your friend down the pub doesn't tell you about, if, the, if you could go to the pub. Um, and that's year-to-date figure. You might have earned £30,000 in the last three months. However, if your year-to-date figure shows only 50k income and it shows the last th you know the last three months have been really really good but actually year to date hasn't been that great some lenders will hold you to that year to date figure so they will only use that year to date figure okay They'll, they might average it over 12 months that year to date figure so what what that's doing is a lot of people were sort of backloading their commission. So the first couple of months they earned nothing, and then when they wanted to go for a mortgage, they were loading their commissions up, okay? And then going up to the lender and say, look, look at my last three months bank statements, and look at my last three months payslip. So the lenders have caught on, and they've said, no, let's have a look at what you've earned over the year, and then we'll take that into account. Let's have a look at your last year's P60. We'll have a look at that as well. So they want to see track records, especially in this environment. So I'm getting more and more calls from people that have been declined by lenders because of their commission profile. So if you're one of them, watch this. Um, there is some information around this. So just you will know why you've been declined, and you will know why if you went directly why you should have you know maybe sought some advice from a professional mortgage broker if not us there are lots of other people out there um so yeah commission over time those two parts have been hit with a lot of lenders a lot of lenders are reducing their commission some will take you know 60 percent, 65 others will take only 30 percent halifax is a big one took only 30 percent of commission um so there are um big changes there are some uh, lenders that will um, hold your commission to your basic salary. So if your basic salary is 30K, if you've earned 70,000 pounds commission, they will hold it to 30K. So they will only allow you to use another 30K. Um, well, you don't want to go down that route. You need to go with a lender that doesn't have that cap. Income multiples uh, have also um, been hit. Um, although I've seen one or two lenders now coming back onto the five times income, uh, but not many. Okay, so you just got to be mindful around that. Um, so that's on, on the income side of things. Uh, on the, the, the process side of things, the valuers are still going out. 
If it's a low loan to value deal, a lot of desktop valuations are happening. What a desktop valuation is, is basically it's automated. Um, they'll do it on a computer system uh, rather than sending out a physical value valuer. And sometimes that could really work for people's advance, you know, benefits. So, you know, uh, I'm having a lot of discussions at the moment with clients to say, right, if you need this done quickly, if it's a low loan to value deal, uh, we might be better off going with this lender rather than this lender because this lender has got a desktop valuation model. Okay, so it's not just about oh, um, I've seen a 1.99 buy to let rate, can I have that one? Guys, all about criteria, the process. What does the lender want? How do they stress test the background properties? How do they stress test your income? You know, don't be fooled just with rate, okay? Rate is very important, okay? But um, it's more to it. You know, just, just not understanding the process, understanding um, the, the, which surveyors they use, okay? Um, because sometimes, um, you know, sometimes there are issues with valuations and down valuations and so forth. So, um, yeah, the, the, the survey process is working quite well. Um, solicit the stuff, they're still under, uh, under it, they're under a lot of pressure. So the legal uh, sector in the next two months, I think, is going to go through turmoil uh, trying to complete on all these cases that they've been promising these clients. I've seen a lot of solicitor firms move their pricing up. They're pricing themselves out or up. They're saying, look, if we're gonna be under pressure, if we're gonna get the grief of these clients, if we're gonna get, I mean, I know how, how difficult some clients are because I'll tell you why. Because everyone's sitting at home. A lot of people are sitting at home. It's very easy to send an email. How are we getting on my case? Very easy. But to action that, you might have to go and look at a lender's system. You've got to go and take the notes. You might have to phone the lender. I mean, I, honestly, I myself, uh, last week, I was on a phone, and I'm not sure if I recorded it and put it on Instagram, but I was on the phone for one hour and 10 minutes to get an update on one case, okay? One hour and 10 minutes I was on hold with a lender to get an update on one case. Okay? So when you send an email and go, how am I getting on? If they don't have an online system, or if their online system is more likely is out of date, this is the sort of stuff that happens. Um, so, um, so when solicitors are getting this as well, you know, how am I getting on my case? So the solicitor has to go and do a lot of things. So, and what happens is with solicitors at the moment, unfortunately, because of the sheer volume of deals, they're just not going back on that email. So once you've sent an email saying, how am I getting on? they haven't come back to you, you send a second email. How am I getting on? They may not come back to you and then worries starts kicking in. What is my solicitor? And then you go on a forum and write, these these guys are useless, you know. It's just the nature of the case. I'm not saying it's the right, I'm just saying these are the reasons why um, a lot of complaints happen um, around the legal profession right now and I don't believe um, uh, it's gonna change, certainly short term. What are we seeing on the buy to let side of things? I'm seeing a lot of low value properties coming on. Um, I get a lot of inquiries now from properties that are like 70K, 80K, okay? Um, and, you know, maybe 50K. Uh, and clients want to buy them under a limited company, a lot more of that. So people are looking up uh, further up north to get value on properties. We're doing a lot more of those type of transactions. Um, for me, it doesn't matter if the mortgage is 500,000 or 50K. It's still probably the same level of work. In fact, probably a little bit more if it's a uh, if it's a lower property value because it may down value and you, the figures might be a bit more tighter and certainly a lot less choice, especially if you're going down a limited company route because there's not that many limited company lenders that will lend on very low value properties. So there is a... There is a gap in the market, but I'm not sure the lenders are queuing up to go and fill that gap. Um, so yeah, a lot more buy to lets around that, a lot more bridging finance inquiries where clients are buying at auction, um, and they are quite, I'll be honest with you, an, an auction inquiry is it's quite a lot of work for me. I'm not sure if it's worth me doing them because we do a lot of work for every person that wins an auction. There's 30 people that don't. And guess what? Those people are probably talking to us to, to get them finances. So um, there's a lot of inquiries on auction finance and bridging finance and things like that. Uh, a lot of them don't go anywhere. Uh, we end up doing a lot of work for it. We send the quotes up. We do everything. And unfortunately, a lot, lot of people are very fickle because they'll go, well, so-and-so offered me 
0.65 and you're offering me 0.69 and what is that all about and then you've just got to you've got to go through a whole motion of educating people a lot of people are not experienced within this sector knowing you know what loan to values actually are you know in terms of you know what's a gross loan to value what sort of valuation are they doing are they doing a 180 day re resale valuation or are they doing an open market valuation all of that sort of so you start you have that conversation with them and you know what by the end of it um, you say well go in then go over there because you obviously don't want to be educated um, if they do great wonderful we'll, we'll do that but we do get a lot of inquiries on that um, which mm, I'm not I'm not sure if a lot of that's going to go anywhere whether they replace them or other people place them uh, another thing uh, around um, uh, the market is how uh, the sector is going to change in the next year or two um, I've always thought that what we do um, it's going it's to be a massive change in our industry. There hasn't been that much change within the mortgage broker industry. We have seen a lot of emergence of online brokers. A lot of it's still smoke and mirrors, and not a lot of it is full technology driven. Simply because there are some regulatory um, rules that the uh, that the advisors have to or the firms have to abide by, um, and at the moment it's still you know, driven very much by the advice process and the advisor. So although there are technology aspects that, you know, you can then source it, you can do this, you can do that, fundamentally an advisor has to be responsible for it. Um, I think that will probably change with a lot of execution only, where people are a lot more confident in trying to do that directly. So maybe you go to a comparison site and, you know, you, you read the lending criteria and you do it yourself, basically cutting us out. Um, but I still believe, I mean, if you've watched my videos and you can go and watch them, I still believe there's a huge need for advice. There's a huge need for um, for someone who is doing this business day in, day out and understands the lending criteria and then can truly compare not just rate but actual criteria, affordability and, and the process itself to give those people uh, confidence. I think there will be more execution only, certainly on the remortgage perspective or the product transfer perspective or even on the buy-to-let side of things, I think there will be more and more execution only coming through uh, with the aid of technology. I think one of the biggest issues that we've got in our industry right now is professional indemnity insurance. Um, it's going to be, uh, I mean, we just got our insurance renewed and I'll tell you this now, it's an absolute mindful. There's a lot more questions around things like interest only, how many cases have you done, how many cases have you done this, full breakdown of what, you, what you're doing, what have you done since, you know, 12 years ago. So, you know, and there's only a few insurance providers insuring, uh, or a lot less insurance providers insuring mortgage brokers. And that will have a massive impact um, on the industry itself. Um, whether small businesses like me will survive in terms of the longer picture, you know, 10 years time, who knows? Um, what I would do is, you know, what I would say is there is always a need for advice and there's always someone who is willing to um, seek that advice and pay for that advice. So I think we'll be okay where we're positioned. We position ourselves as a, a small business with uh, personal links rather than, you know, a machine, a call center um, with hundreds of people out there. But there is change coming. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that forms uh, in the future. All right, guys, that's about it. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.